it's finally time for me to do some lace tutorials. After months of me doing some really basic lace work on my own, I am finally meeting the cries for tutorials on lace making. So let's learn to make lace. Hello and welcome to Book Hoarding by Bianca. Sometimes we talk about books, but today I'm talking about craftiness. Today I'm talking about making your own supplies to start the journey on bobbin lace making. What is bobbin lace making? I might hear you ask. You will see a fun little link up here to my bobbin lace 101 video that I did months ago. So check that video out and check the blog post out. I will also link in the description. It has all of the linkage to the things that I use to get started. One of the things you kind of need to get started is a pillow of some kind. Today I'm going to be talking about this pillow, which is a bolster pillow. But don't worry, you can use household items. So it's going to be a great little like stash buster and cool little project to use up boxes and felt and things around your house. Today we're going to be doing a bolster pillow and that's going to have this little middle piece that you'll be working on, like so, that will sit in a pillow and that you'll have your work hanging off of. And you'll have your work here on this pillow part, the little brown pillow, and you'll just keep turning it as you work. So it's going to be making one of those long lines of lace that you're probably familiar with versus just like a closer piece, which you'll be using a cookie pillow for. Don't worry, I do have a cookie pillow tutorial coming, but that's not what we're doing today. So this is my first bolster pillow, and you can see here that it is, um, it's fine, it's, it works. I'll do a quick verbal run through of how I made this. Basically, I used um, the back of a notebook for the cardboard. I covered this in felt. I put some polyfill in here, covered the polyfill, um, the bolstering pillow part here that moves that has your little lace piece on it is the same pool noodle method that I use for this one. So don't worry, I'm going to go over all that in detail. And then I covered it in a fashion fabric um, that I can easily take off because I just sewed it on instead of gluing it on. So I can easily take that off if it gets dirty or dusty. And then I just used a kitchen skewer and some really easy twill tape here as a little thing that I can pull this in and out of as needed. So you can see here, I can just pop that off. I also usually use this on top of a pillow, like an actual pillow to get that as a nice ergonomic position for myself. If I'm doing this at a table, I actually use one of those little adjustable things that you use for like your laptop or your iPad. So I just literally use that to make an angle that works for me. But here is my first bolster pillow. You can see my long line of my autumnal looking lace. So this has been a little some project I've been working on, but I decided to make a new bolster pillow. So not only can I show you how to make one, it's a little bit sturdier than this little flimsy thing that use a notebook. I use a box for this. So hopefully this will be a better tutorial for you on a long lasting pillow that we can get you started on lace making with. All right, so before I get into what you need, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share because uh, that's how we get this really cool fun stuff in front of people and we get other people really invested in our random crafts that we decide to fully wholeheartedly get into because why not? Okay, so here are the materials you're gonna need for this. I used a cardboard box or three. Basically, I used a bunch of pieces of cardboard that were around my house. Um, one big enough for the entire base for this and then a smaller one that makes up this part and then a couple other little pieces for down here. So I'd say use cardboard that you have around the house. I use a pool noodle for the base of this skewer. You'll want a kitchen skewer that you'll cut off the edge of or something long. A lot of hot glue, some sewing stuff, felt or fleece or whatever you have that's, you know, even scrap wool, whatever, that's just going to be really plush and cushiony. You're gonna want polyfill or any kind of scraps that you have that you can make cabbage out of to stuff in there to make a nice little pillow thing. You're, you're also gonna want enough felt to wrap your pool noodle in. If you don't have a pool noodle, think about other alternatives that are going to be squishy. I've seen some people use a very, very almost Taylor's ham stuffed pillow um, with maybe use some foam, if you can just do wrap it in a layer of EVA, um, layer of cork, any of those things if you have them around the house. If it's just for a practice first time thing, I'd say definitely those are options. If you kind of go for the not necessarily this method where it's on a skewer, but more so it's a 
pillow, just like a round pillow that you can physically turn. You don't really need this whole thing. I've seen people use just like a basket for the base of that. Um, and you obviously won't need to put a skewer through the middle. And then the other thing that you'll need is um, a little cool fashion fabric or something to cover it. We're all set. So those are the materials you need and let's get started on making one. All right, as you can see, I just took a box that I had around the house that seemed like it'd be a good fit. Um, what you're looking for is something that's just going to be kind of just an easy length for you. It's going to be able to hold your little bolster pillow that you're going to make out of a pool noodle. I am just taking off the sides of them here. And you can see that it says, you know, do not break the whatever. You're breaking things to make things. Okay, now that I've got the little flaps off, I'm using this large piece of cardboard left over from my coffin project. And what I'm gonna do is basically use this to make a base for this. And I'm gonna glue it on. And through the magic of cinema, you'll see quite shortly what this looks like. But yeah, I'm basically gonna use a bigger piece of cardboard. Um, and I'm gonna hold this dangerously. Yeah. Um, to basically make a base for this. You can probably use other things um, if you have them, but basically I just wanted something that would hold the whole thing down and be a nice consistent base shape. So I'm just going to cut that a little bit tighter to fit and um, you can see that I have my glue gun already warming up. This project probably is the thing that I use the most glue sticks in my whole life. Like. Like, I was in brownies, and I used more hot glue during this project than my entire time failing to be a brownie. Um, so you're going to put hot glue on the base piece, and then you're going to glue down that bolster pillow. What are we going to call it? Um, box? The box thing? The, the pool noodle holder? I don't know. You can't see right here, but I'm just going around the edges um, where it maybe didn't stick as much, where I didn't get as much glue. I was running out of um, melted glue and getting that into the edges to make sure it's nice and secure. I mean, theoretically, you're going to be sewing um, and building a bunch of stuff around this, um, but you don't want that base to fall off because you need it to be nice and in shape. And now you can see very clearly that this is originally a box for Tom's chewables because um, we need a lot of Tom's in this house. We literally have a thing of Tom's for every, every floor of the house. Getting old's the worst. It's a scam. Anyway, so... I am cutting this pool noodle to fit here, but it should actually be a little shorter. It should even be a little bit shorter than I made it. Um, you can see that I am cutting off some excess here, but it should be even shorter because I will be adding, um, I will be adding, you know, fabric and things to that. You can see that I'm checking, but I did not check well enough. I really should have taken a little bit more off to make it. Um, fit there but whatever so I'm putting that at the edge I'm making little marks with my pen about where I think where I think the dowel will go where I think it'll pop through and then I'm guesstimating um, where I want to bring down that edge because if you noticed for a lot of bolster pillow things um, it's slanted so you want to build like a basically slanted pillow up to your moving pillow and that's what I'm using a ruler to kind of do. Um, it doesn't have to be perfect. Like you do want it to be as similar as possible, but it doesn't have to be 100% perfect just because it's going to be stuffed in a pillow. So it's not like if it's an inch off, it's going to be noticeable, but otherwise you're fine. So carefully, look at how carefully, carefully I'm um, cutting into this. Again, this is just cardboard and box cutters and, uh, also, my table is covered in um, self-healing cutting mats, so that's why I'm cool just cutting all over it. That is a thing that you should invest in if you can, because um, it really does save your craft table from just getting cut up all the time. Uh, I found these mats um, at 
Ross, which is our local discount. It's not local. Well, I mean, like, they're, they happen to have stores in my area. You know what I mean. Anyway, Ross is like this heavily discounted store. Uh, and you can see now the angle that I'm starting to bring this in. This pillow down to. Yeah, look at that. And now I'm like, oh yeah, that'll just fit in nicely here if I just fold it and cut it. So then that makes like part of then that slant as a base. And that's one last thing I will have to do later. So I'm just cutting off those flaps and doing that. But you can like piece together this however you need to. Um, you could have cut that piece off and just put one cardboard piece down across that whole edge instead of piecing it like I will do later. And you can see me using um, way more hot glue because uh, that's what my life has become now. It's just using hot glue everywhere, everywhere. So you will want to find pieces that will help you finish that slant off just because you probably don't want to stuff that whole little edge. You want it to have a little bit more um, heft there, I guess. So I'm just using some boxes that I had to kind of fill that space in. Um, again, you could do this with one piece, you could do it however makes sense. You can throw things on the floor, you can drop everything, including your bonnet, while you're trying to do this. Um, you want to make sure there's still enough space for that. Oh, and it's off the table. Magically, it is back. Um, and now I'm cutting my dowel. Um, oh yeah, pro tips for this. Um, so cut off that sharp edge of the dowel. Um, I'm just using a kitchen skewer to do this and now I'll be cutting into the um, cardboard thing where I want the um, dowel to sit because you don't want to just sit on top you need it to be a little nested in there so it stays in place um, for my other pillow I just used twill tape because I also had um, pillow on the side flush I don't have pillow on the side flush for this one yet um, it's probably going to happen as like a an attachment with velcro, but that's like a different thing um, Just for the purposes of this. This is small and uh, that's Why we're doing it this way So after you've cut that dowel and you've cut into the sides of the cardboard piece I used other foam that I'd gotten with my pool noodles and Basically, I'm just going to make a little circle that will fit into that hole so that the dowel will have an exact center placement instead of just kind of, as you were seeing, when I would have the dowel and the pool noodle, it would just kind of hang there and be a little sand. So this just helps it kind of stay stable and stay even. Um, so I'm just gonna use this little foam stuff that I had, but you can use anything else. Like you can use cardboard, um, anything that makes sense for you again I just hot glue it down what I should have done was make two holes so make one hole in each of these for the dowel to go through before I did this but I didn't and in a second you're gonna see me struggle because I uh, enjoy pain anyway so um, another tip while I'm thinking about it because I just use hot glue um, make sure that you are using your hot glue gun on a space that you can easily clean and that's not anywhere near fabric or your ironing board because you do not want to get look at me Bianca the past struggling mm, girl you shouldn't have done it anyway you don't want to get any of those like flyaway pieces of hot glue um on your fabric anywhere near your iron because it's just gonna be a mess okay I finally use an awl to help me get that hole in the center again just cut that hole before you do it okay so now you see what I mean where it's just gonna sit there and I make sure it's gonna be able to turn a little bit um, as you go you just want to make sure that that's gonna be able to turn and also keep in mind that it's gonna have layers on it of felt and fabric um, so you want to keep making sure there's enough space um, around everything for that. So I decided to cover this in felt first. I guess it's technically like fleece and not really felt, but I just decided to cover it in this first so that um, the stuffing would just have a little bit of space, a um, little bit of texture to sit on, if that makes sense. I don't know if it makes sense, but that's what I did. 
So I'm basically just going to be making sure that this is covered in some felt and in some fabric so that I can make a smooth base and then put like another layer of polyfill and stuff so that that can be smooth too. Um, basically giving a couple of layers for yourself to work on. Uh, uh, you're never going to really want to put like a ton of weight on this thing. So keep that in mind. This is not like made for putting books on top of or anything. I trimmed some excess. I folded the bottom under. Um, but first I do pop in some polyfill because if you noticed before I was done, there was a little bit of space between the end of that cardboard and the edge of the flat base of cardboard. So I just use this as a way to fill that in. You can see I'm just trying to even it out a little bit so it, it's going to be okay. It's not a big deal if it's a little uneven. You can still, you know, mess around with it. You can see me frantically trying to add more hot glue. Dear Lord. Um, <laughs> Fold that over. Yay, look at that. That was your first little little step. So I, I did more layers of polyfill and everything. You can do what makes sense for you. This just was what worked for me after making my first bolster pillow. I felt like this is this was basically a better pillow for my needs for making this kind of lace. I think you can definitely check out the short video I did, um, the short time lapse I did when I made my first one, that's literally just like the back of a notebook, polyfill, and a lot of hope. <laughs> but that's that worked for my, my needs then. But you can definitely, you know, use a variation of any of the stuff that I've shown you in this video or in the um, short time lapse that I'll link to of my first pillow and you know, it, you're basically just using household items to make this at this point. If you also want to check out the other links that I'll put in the um, description, I'll have other people's DIY videos and stuff that I found helpful. If you're making this just from home stuff, I, I think the big thing is you're just trying to make a thing, um, whether it's a pool noodle or, you know, using a bunch of cabbage and a glorified Taylor's ham. Um, a rounder tailor's ham to make something that's usable for you to make lace on. Um, you know, this is definitely the budget option for us who uh, want to do this as a fun hobby, but don't quite have the funds or means to invest in that way. So, you know, take all this with a, you know, kind of chaotic crafting seal of approval. It's not meant to be professional. It's just meant to get the job done. And be a way for you to test this out and have fun with this craft um, before you have to commit fully to something. And I'm just using, you know, scrap stuff that I have. You know, this is this is that fleece stuff that I'm never going to use for anything. I've put another layer of polyfill down and this fleece and just cutting it down to fit nicely. I tried to even out the polyfill a little bit. But it's not a big deal. You know, this, again, is it's just for you to use, to get into a thing, to learn it, to see what works for you. I think the other benefit of making your own little DIY pillow for around the house is that then that kind of helps you understand what you might want to invest in and buy if you do eventually get the funds and do want to do this more professionally. Um, that's just my two cents. Um, I definitely think... I learned a ton about my style and my preferences after I made my first one and, you know, used it for multiple projects, multiple samplers, and got an idea of not only samplers, but like what are projects that I would want to do consistently over a long period of time. So now I have this nicely kind of evened out and I've put that in and I, I'm ready to cover the bolster pillow. So... I'm just going to cut a bunch of fabric out for this, even amount of fabric, and that's basically going to be covering this little pool noodle piece a few times. You just see me rolling it gently, trying to keep it even. Um, just pinning 
pinning it down when I feel like I've gotten a good thickness. And again, I should have I should have cut this a little bit sh shorter. Uh, this piece, this noodle thing, I should have cut it a little bit shorter, but I didn't. So you know, don't be me. I'd say you probably, depending on how much stuff that you put in it, want to cut it down. Um, maybe an inch smaller than the space that you are using. So you can see, I just cut it straight. The uh, the fabric, I just cut it straight to the sides of that little little pool noodle piece. Um, I also just did a really basic basting stitch because I'm gonna cover this all in like a fashion fabric, if you will, which is just quilting cotton. So more hot glue because that's what our life has become now. We just put hot glue in everything. I put a little bit of felt on the bottom to give it a little bit more even look. You can see that I'm constantly trying to get the hot glue off my fingers because brownies didn't teach me how to not scold myself. Uh, and yeah, I'm just going to cover all the sides of this because I wanted to kind of have a nice little even texture look to it. Do you have to do this? Nah. Nah. You don't have to do all this. But I'm extra and I'm doing all of this. Because um, I didn't really do a ton of detailing for my first pillow. And I want this to have a little bit better texture because this is the pillow that I will be using for tutorials um, and those videos people have been asking for. So I wanted to be nice, nicer looking and also, um, you know, a little sturdier because I'll probably be using it for a few things and maybe I'll even take it into the wild and make lace in the woods since that's um, a thing I can do. I can make lace in the woods or by the ocean. Um, literally two things that are walking distance from my house so you know maybe that's a thing I'll do lace in the woods um so yeah I'm just using scraps you can see these are just scrap pieces and now I'm grabbing some fabric now if you um look at blogs some of them will say tell you what fabrics to use to be gentler on the eyes that like typically blue I guess is used I assume it's a darker blue um I didn't really have a darker blue except for that felt but there wasn't really enough felt to go over everything and I didn't want to look at felt so uh, I happened to have this little it's not a fat quarter but like I won a set of fat quarters and this came in it and it's like a cloudy sky down to the ocean beach with shells on it you can kind of see it there but I was like okay clouds seem like they're okay it's like a light blue it's not like an intense pattern so basically you'll just want to pick something that's gentle on your eyes and I'm literally just pinning it on and uh, kind of just like using my hands to be like what's gonna fit where is it gonna go this seems good enough for this side I'm just pinning it to the now felted cardboard so it's the other benefit of covering this whole thing in felt it's that then you can easily pin the fabric if you want to cover it in a nicer fabric um you can you can pin a fabric to it so i'm doing kind of what i did before which is i'm just covering the top and then the bottom i'm just folding under kind of like an envelope if you will maybe look at how messy my desk is it's like could i have more junk on this desk i could I don't even have my sewing machine on here right now. Anyway, so I fold this over, and again, you're just gonna for for the fabric that I put around these. I actually um, just sew it on instead of hot gluing it on, because then I can interchange it um, if it gets dirty, if anything happens to it, it gets torn up or something. So my logic is the felt is kind of the perma thing. And the fabric covering is the thing that kind of keeps it clean and that you can switch out as needed if you just get so tired of it, if it gets dirty. Um, so yeah, and you can just see me here now basting the edges. They're not going to look pretty. But one of my first projects will probably be using um, sampler stitches to make 
some long pieces of lace that I can just cover the edges with as like a fun thing where I can be like, okay, so here's like these stitches. Here's some samplers that I'll just uh, put along the edges, right? That seems fine. You can see here I'm struggling because somehow I already made a knot. Somehow I already made a knot in this. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna pull it out and start again because somehow two stitches into something, massive knot. Anyway, so yeah, I'm just gonna baste, do really basic stitches for this. If you wanna be fancy and measure things and make a very nice slip cover, you can. I just chose not to because that's, that's not the purpose of what I'm making. This is just a thing for me to use for more projects and especially for tutorials. So I wanted to kind of have a nicer background versus the busier background I used for my last thing, which was just an Ikea duvet cover. All right, so I've based it on the last of this. There's still gonna be a little part at the bottom that no one will see because this will just always be on top of a table. That'll be the felt showing through, but I think that's fine. If, if you need it to be covered, you can cover it. And then you just finish your stitch. You um, pop that bolster pillow in. Yeah, look at that. And then you're ready. That's it. You're ready to go. You're ready to get pattern printed and start making lace on your bolster pillow. We did it. Yay! Thank you for joining me on this fun little DIY journey. I hope this was fun. I hope this gives you an idea of ways that you can use household items to make your own. It's not a definite, like you have to do it that way. There's definitely variations you can do. There's ways that you can make more space on the sides for this that probably would be really good for you. I just did this really basic thing. I'm gonna build out a couple of Velcro Dawn pillows for this, but just, I wanted something that looked a little bit better, didn't have a pattern so that I could do more tutorials on it. Um, but this is a really basic idea, so hopefully it inspires you to, um, you know, make your own, but also feel free to modify it. I'd love to know if you do make your own. Um, definitely just have fun with it. And again, this is just a budget solution if you want to try out a craft and you don't really want to buy into putting a ton of money into something if you're not sure you're going to like it. Anyway, thank you for joining me today. I can't wait to see you for my next little... Um, set up videos. I'm going to be going over making cookie pillows. I'm going to go over setting up your workspace um, to start making bobbin lace. And you don't want to miss that. So make sure that you like, subscribe, and share wonderful stuff from my channel. And if you like what you see here, don't forget to check out my links in the description to follow me on all the places and see the projects I'm working on, along with my coffee and Patreon that are really cool places to leave me a little Thank you if you appreciate the work I'm doing. Uh, patrons at the Lizzie Bennett here and above get a special shout out in my videos. Thank you for joining me and don't forget to make it so or in this case, make it lace. <laughs>